I think I love you. That's too bad. Reach out, touch me. You know, so going into this movie, I heard a little whisper saying that this movie, Atomic Blonde, is the female version of John Wick. Is there any truth to that? Well, let's find out. My name is Brennan Keith Avery, and this is just my opinion. All right, guys, thank you for tuning in for my review slash opinion on Atomic Blonde. This was not going to be a long review. This is going to be short and sweet. As far as my expectations going into this film, they were mediocre. You're seeing all the trailers and TV spots and whatnot, you know, it did like it did look like it had a great sense of action. And I am an action guy. Um, this movie is directed by David Leach. If you're familiar with him, he was uh, uncredited for directing uh, John Wick which came out in 2014. I don't think he had anything to do with uh, part two, but he's uh, really known in Hollywood for all of his stunt directing and uh, action choreography and things like that. So seeing him behind the camera, you know, did kind of get me a little bit excited. And I also knew that he is going to be the director for Deadpool 2 that comes out uh, summer of next year. Um, but this movie stars, uh, it stars Charlize Theron and James McAvoy. And what it's about is this takes place in the 80s, right after the Cold War. And there is an undercover MI6 agent, which is Charlize Theron, who goes over to Berlin to try to find out and investigate who murdered another agent. Now, the best thing about this movie is the action. I will go ahead and get this out of the way. Uh, the movie comes in at right under two hours, one hour and 55 minutes. And if you can get past the first hour of this movie to where when the action uh, finally starts, you may have a good time. But one of the main things about the main problems with this whole movie is that it's very slow in the very beginning. It's very monotone and dry and it's pretty boring just to keep it pretty simple. Um, it was very frustrating because... <clears throat> When you see all the trailers, it looks like it's action packed, but it's really not. I mean, this has nothing. It's, it doesn't even come remotely close to John Wick 1 or John Wick 2. So maybe that's my fault for having those expectations. But, you know, uh, the action just takes a long time to get there. As far as far as Charlize Theron's character and James McAvoy, I do. I did prefer James McAvoy's character uh, more over hers. And I just brought those two up because of the main stars. And that's just because James McAvoy, he has some charisma to him. He has some attitude. He has some funk. And there was actually something different about his character that you found out later on in the film. Charlize Theron, the only colorful thing that she had going on was her blonde wig. And it really wasn't even blonde. It looked more white. But her character was so dull, boring, and monotone, like seriously, whether she was sitting down in a conference room or an interrogation room, talking on the phone, talking to a friend, or even having sex, everything about her character was just dry, monotone, just, I mean, th th you know, there was no creativity to it or anything. She would just sit there and talk like this the whole time and act like she didn't want to be there and, you know, just it, it, it just got really annoying. And I didn't care about her character as well, whether she lived or died. It really did not matter to me because it just wasn't much to her character or her surroundings. And when I say surroundings, it's really frustrating because they try to market this thing where it's 80s with neon blue and green and pink lights. And there really isn't that much of that either. This movie is damn near a black and white film with sprinkles of color here and there. And then the most of the color from the movie comes from subtitles that's used from spray paint. So, you know, that's just another reason why you shouldn't really like this movie or care for it because I didn't myself. Um, as far as the rest of the characters, it's really hard to care for them either because no one is loyal to anybody. Everybody pretends like, you know, they're down with their country or down with a certain organization and they're going to try to investigate and find the real reason, you know, behind why this crime happened. And we're going to find justice. But at the end of the movie, you find out all that is bull crap. Nobody cares. Everyone is selfish and just really out there for their own benefit and just trying to survive. And there's nothing wrong with you just trying to survive but at the same time how can you criticize somebody for being crooked when you're crooked yourself and I, I really just didn't like that so I didn't like the color palette of the movie the cinematography this was a very dark film literally there just was not that much color to it and then when there was color from the neon lights from the subtitles you know it was just very jarring I really didn't care about um, Charlize Theron's character, she was dull. The only highlight was James McAvoy and, um, you know, all of his uh, charisma and whatnot. 
And um, the action was great. You know, um, it, it was really heart pounding. You hear every punch, every kick, every stab, every grunt, every moan. It was really nice. And um, excuse me, I will give David Leach that because he was working the hell out of that camera and doing a lot of the action scenes. It either looked or it appeared or gave it the illusion that this was all done with one take, like no credits. Like he is just in there in the midst of the action. You know, and I'm just like, man, I, I cannot believe the camera didn't break. I mean, how long did they choreograph this thing? Because this is freaking amazing. But the only thing is, is that the action isn't good enough for me to want to buy. I mean, I wouldn't mind seeing it again. But when this comes out on Blu-ray or whatever, I wouldn't buy it because, you know, like uh, John Wick part one or John Wick part two. Or I don't know if I've heard of the raid or the raid redemption uh, part two. These movies uh, that I have here. I can watch all these movies either straight through and enjoy the action or I can just pop it in and just enjoy the action scenes. But as great as the action is in this Atomic Blonde, I cannot do it because the movie was just boring. When there was no fighting, I was just like, man, I'm ready to go. I looked at my watch and I only saw that we was only 45 minutes into it. You know, so if you can get it comes in at one hour and 55 minutes, if you can get past the first hour, you may have a good time. The movie did end a lot better than what it started. But for the most part, I was ready to go and completely let down. If I had to rate Atomic Blonde out of a one out of 10, I would give it a 5.5 out of 10. Yes, a 5.5 out of 10. But guys, that's just my opinion. Have you seen Atomic Blonde? Do you want to see it? Does it look good to you? Does it look like it sucks? Did I turn you on? Did I turn you off? Do you agree with me or do you disagree with me? Let me know in the comment section below. Let's get this conversation going and keep it flowing. If you like this video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. And if you don't like the video, that's fine. My feelings aren't hurt. Just leave me a comment below why a mature comment and still give me the thumbs up since you're watching this on youtube go ahead and subscribe to my youtube channel so you can get all the content that i have to provide you can go to my website check me out there and bookmark and also about subscribe and check the bell or click the bell so you can be notified when i make uploads and also look me up on social media another movie that's coming out this week is the emoji movie they didn't have i saw atomic blind on wednesday but i just didn't have time to review it i didn't they didn't have any screenings for the emoji movie because I heard that movie sucked. But if you're interested in my opinion, my review, my take on Valerian, The City of a Thousand Planets, Dunkirk, and Girls Trip, um, I do have reviews um, that are uploaded on the channel as well. And there's also a link to those reviews in the description box. So guys, I just want to thank you again for tuning in for my opinion slash review for Atomic Blonde starring James McAvoy and Charlize Theron. And before you go, don't forget that my name is Brennan Keith Avery, and that's just my opinion. Peace.